How do you keep meat after you butcher a cow? This is something that we had to do in the winter and the reason that you guys are asking how you keep meat is because we did not have freezers or refrigerators because we didn't have electricity or gas lines to run these things. So we couldn't. So how do we keep the meat? We preserved it. So we could only do this in the winter. We would butcher our pigs, our beef, um, some chicken. This is when we did all that work. So the way we did this is, let's just say we butchered a uh, beef. We would uh, can it, we preserved it in mason jars. And we did it in, in various different ways, but we would grind up a lot of it. So there was a couple different types of things that we would can. We would can beef chunks, and we would uh, can what was called, um, what was it called, like beef bologna. So we would make bologna, so it had different seasonings in it, but it was grinded up. So the chunks would go in here, we would season it with whatever we would want. And then what you do is you make sure this part is nice and clean. And then these we would put in hot water to get them nice and hot. Then we would take them and make sure that was nice and clean because you can't have any dirt on, on this part and you can't have any dirt on this part. Otherwise it may not seal. So then you put that on, put this on and you're gonna make it nice and tight, and then you're gonna put it in a pot that is able to be submerged all the way, cover it with water, put the lid on, and we get got it to boiling, and then it would have to be on there for at least three hours minimum now i know what some of you guys are gonna say you should have used a pressure cooker duh, duh, duh. well have you ever seen a pressure cooker that can hold hundreds of quarts at a time probably not the water kettle that we had in our washroom where we heated up water to take our weekly bath <laughs> um or heat it up for other things, like literally anything we needed to heat water for. This massive water kettle, we had a cast iron one, they have a stainless steel one now, could hold over a hundred jars of whether it was meat or fruits or vegetables, whatever season it was that we were canning in there. And so all you had to do was feed the bottom with wood to keep the boiling going. Once those three hours were up, we would take it out of the water, we'd set it out, and then what we would do is check to see if it was sealed. If it wasn't, you make it a little bit tighter, you put it upside down and let it go, and either the next day or a few hours later, go back and check it, it's probably sealed. And that's how we preserved our meat. Then you store it in the nice, cool, dark cellar. We call it a cellar. Some people call it a basement. That's where you kept it. And the stuff that we grind it up, we would take the ground up meat and just use our hands or a meat, um, what was it called? Like a meat pounder, I don't know what it's called, but it's specifically for meat and you, oh, press. <laughs> and you press it down into a jar so everything is nice and tight and there's no, no air. So then when you open the jar and you're ready to eat it, here's what you do. Take a knife and you slice the meat and now you got bologna slices. We would make bologna sandwiches with those bologna slices. No casings, nothing. Now we did make sausage too. We had a smoking house and we would smoke our own sausages and stuff. But literally that was the concept of preserving our meats and not needing 
People have been doing it for hundreds and hundreds of years, and they're still doing it. There you go.